Hello witches and bitches and everyone in between. It is I, Tiffany. This is my witchy vlog for summer 2024. My ring just snagged on my sweater. If you're unfamiliar with these vlogs, I do usually have a rough format where I talk about some mundane things I did, some pagan life things that I did, some witchy life things that I did, spells I did and their results and any updates I have for the channel. Uh, there's a lot of overlap in this, and I'm also going to talk a good deal about mental health for part of it. So yeah, have fun. To start things off, I'm very excited. The day that I'm filming this, it is my birthday. Yay! I'm 36. I'm almost 40. What the hell? I'm pretty sure I'm still in my 20s. What? Anyway, that's kind of crazy to think about. But yes, today's my birthday, September 20th, and the day in which I'm filming. Uh, two days from now will be the autumn equinox and I usually kind of celebrate the two together over one big weekend. So that is what I will be doing, but I'll probably go into more detail of my celebration of the autumn equinox with my autumn vlog. And in regards to birthday and me not feeling my age, I'm going to circle back to that in a little bit. In regards to channel updates, let me just say I don't have any. <laughs> in regards to everyday life, I am still very busy with, I think in my last vlog, I mentioned that I had an acting project coming up. And so that has started as an acting project. It's still an acting project, but now it's also morphed into a writing project and a production project. And although we're wrapping on that soon, it's kind of flowing into, it's giving, it's opened up the door for other opportunities basically. So let me leave it at that. Um, I can't talk too much on it publicly, but if you are curious about that aspect of my life, you can make sure to follow my personal slash acting Instagram. Basically, it's my Instagram account that isn't related to the channel. I do have other writing projects that I've mentioned before, and I am still working on them, but they had to take a little dip into the back burner for a minute because, yeah, I'm, I'm working on writing on this other project. So I'm spread a little bit thin because all of this, of course, is on top of mommy life. Um, so yeah, it's still been busy, but in a really good way. Why don't I just start with the beginning of summer and we'll go from there. <laughs> to start at the beginning of summer, I'm trying to remember what I did for the summer solstice and I am drawing a blank. I know I did something. I don't know. Maybe it'll come back to me. Normally I write it down and it's in my thing, but it's not there. So now, and now I'm just like, okay, June, what was I doing in June? I don't know. A lot more happened around Lunasa. So I'll, I'll talk on that one in a bit. But in general, around that time, we had some pretty big heat waves in my area. So we bought an air conditioning unit. I think that's a great way to celebrate summer. <laughs> no, but I did go to the county fair, which I love. That's for me, that's a big part of celebrating summer, the arrival of summer. Local fairs, taking place around the summer solstice, Lunasa and the autumnal equinox have, it's been going on for, I mean, centuries in various different regions of the world. And so I know for me, that is a big part of my summer celebration. It's also a nostalgia factor because I've been going to this county fair since I was a child. But even way, way, way long ago, you know, farmers would come and bring livestock and their best crops and artisans and other, you know, blacksmiths and various different merchants and skilled craftsmen would come and they would bring their items to display, to sell. And I love that even today, although of course it has taken on, especially, you know, here in America, it's taken on quite a bit of a capitalistic coloring to it. The spirit of that definitely still remains. And then of course you get to add in the fun of like cotton candy and euros and rides. But it was really great to take my daughter for the first time. That was a lot of fun. We didn't go on any rides. She was just a little bit too small. And my sister and I stopped because she wanted to look at some, there was this one stall that had a lot of crystals and she wanted to look at them for her girlfriend. And I thought like, oh, I'll do a little crystal shopping myself. And so I did get this, this onyx ring there, which it's been in pretty much all my videos because I wear it every day now. I almost never take it off. I love it so much. And then I have blessed it for protection as well. But then also, so they had this deal where they were like, buy two things and get one free. And I had also found this really cute purse. So I, that wasn't a thing. So I was like, okay, I'm going to pick out my free item. And I found a ring that is, I know you guys can't see it. The camera's all the way over there, but it is Hecate's wheel with the, um, 
triple moons. And I was like, what the hell? Like, how often do you just find that? Like, I haven't even seen Hecate's wheel at any metaphysical or occult shops I've been to, let alone at a random crystal stall at the county fair. So clearly it was meant for me. I also went to the beach a few times, um, took my daughter there and let her just enjoy it. She tried to eat the sand, of course, but she also thought that waves were hilarious. We also went on, well, it was supposed to be a five day camping trip, but we had to cut it short by one day because the baby got her very first ever cold. So, you know, it is what it is, but we, she loved the fire. She was so into the campfire. We did get to do a family hike while we were out there. We just, uh, the day that we, that we came home was the day we were supposed to go kayaking and that just didn't happen, but that's okay. Going camping is already, it's fun and it's relaxing, but it's also a lot of work, uh, especially because we do the tent camping and we cook over the fire. So you got to, you know, plan for all of that and all the setup and breakdown and everything. And, and, um, doing that with a baby under the age of one was, uh, definitely a new level of difficulty added. But I would totally do it again. I mean, she's just a really easygoing kid, luckily. So uh, that made it easy. But it definitely had its hard parts, especially once we started realizing, oh no, she's she's sick. Like she's not okay. Yeah, we we gotta go. Then we also did our week long trip to Portland. I've never been to Portland, Oregon, which is funny because everybody's always telling me like, oh my gosh, you would love Portland. So, and I know a lot of people there. I have family there. I have friends there from literally every like period of my life I have friends there. So the fact that I've just never gotten around to visiting Portland is kind of insane to me. I did visit a wonderful little occult bookstore which I posted about it. I used the trip to Portland as a sort of transitional period from moving from summer into fall. So we drove, uh, we did, we split it into two days because we had the baby with us. We didn't want to, if it was just us, we would have just like push through and done the whole drive in one go, but you can't do that with a baby. So split into two days. We stopped the first day in Mount Shasta and stayed in a little cabin there. And then on the way back, we stopped in Crescent city and had a little beachfront motel. As we went up, uh, we were just, we just arrived right after they had a really intense heat wave, but it was still pretty warm. It was like in the eighties, not like, you know, crazy hot, but still warm. And I had my summer road trip playlist going the whole way up. And then on the way back, I had my autumn playlist playing, <laughs> not the entire time. We also like broke it up with some podcasts and other things, but, uh, you know, just to kind of get that feeling. And then of course, uh, the weather we had one night where it, it rained like crazy just one evening and then the temperature started to dip a little bit again not super cold but it was like a nice transition it was perfect it was, it was everything i wanted but we'll definitely be back at some point there was a lot of things that we just didn't have time to do there's so much to do so i'll definitely be back at some point in the future <laughs> now in talking about all of that i just wanted to touch on um my mental health a little bit and just something that's kind of changed for me in the past year because I don't know if any of you can relate, whether as somebody with anxiety, mental health issues, or if, if you're a parent. Um, so in having my daughter, it's kind of brought this renewed zest to life for me in general. Um, so in one way, it's brought back this nostalgic, uh, just, okay, I feel like I get to, in introducing my daughter, to the best parts of my childhood. I, cause I want to share that with her. Obviously I don't want to force it upon her if it's things that she doesn't like, but right now she's one, she's still figuring out what a preference is. So right now I get to introduce her to the experiences that I loved about my childhood. And I'm really excited about that. And so in a way I get to kind of also enjoy them over again, which just has me feeling so youthful, not, not in a, in an immature way, not in a bad way or in a way that I would, not be the most present and mature and responsible parent to my daughter, but it's just brought this new like vivaciousness to me and my spirit. And, you know, it's also just had me realizing a lot of things about how I've been living my life the past, uh, I, I don't know, eight years or so, maybe a little less. So I used to be a very, very spontaneous person. Um, very adventurous person. I still am at heart. 
uh, but somewhere along the way over those past eight to 10 years, whatever, I lost a bit of that. And having my daughter kind of made me stop and try to reevaluate where that happened and why that happened. And I think it all comes down to about 10 years ago is when I started having really bad panic attacks and anxiety that would become just absolutely overwhelming to the point that I, you know, especially for me, my anxiety a lot of times centers around, uh, social occasions, not when I'm being social, but it's after the fact I'm having a great time while I'm out doing whatever it is I'm doing. It's the next day that it's almost like I just got overstimulated and over socialized. And the next day I'm trying to recharge that battery and my brain just gets incredibly illogical and decides, Hey, you offended somebody. What did you say or do that offended them? I don't know. You're not going to be able to put your finger on anything. You're not going to be able to remember anything. And even telling yourself that is not going to make the anxiety go away, but you definitely offended somebody. And now everybody hates you and you're probably going to get fired from your job and on and on and on just this illogical train of thought. <laughs> and some days I have this anxiety and, um, I can handle it. It's not a big deal. And other days I don't want to get out of bed because it's so bad. Obviously when you have a child, you don't have the option of just not getting out of bed. So there's that, but here's the other thing. Let's take it back to, you know, before having my daughter, I came to this realization. I haven't been on any, you know, medications in 12 years, I believe. And that was working for me. I mean, I had a good grasp on everything for the most part. Like, yes, did I have days where I was debilitated by anxiety? Sure. But for the most part, it was not affecting my life overall. Like, yeah, those days really sucked, but they weren't preventing me from going to work. So I thought like, well, I've got a handle on it, blah, blah, blah. Then I had my wedding and at my wedding, it was lovely. Was it perfect? No, <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Is there things that I would change about it? Sure. Of course, if I had more money or, you know, kind of in hindsight, what have you, but for the most part, it was lovely. A month after the wedding, I got the pictures and I couldn't look through them. I struggled to look through them because I would just get overwhelmed with anxiety. I, I don't, and I didn't know why, you know, and to be clear, I didn't drink at the wedding. I think I had like a sip of champagne and half a glass of wine at the actual wedding. And while I was getting ready, I had, which was hours before, you know, I had one mimosa. So it wasn't like a chemical thing. It was just, I mean, it was a chemical thing clearly, but it wasn't like a substance thing. I should put it that way. And I just came to realize this is not okay. This is not okay. Nothing bad happened at my wedding that I would look back on and be like, wow, I should be ashamed of that. And yet something in my brain was telling me like, you should, you don't know what it is, but you should absolutely be ashamed and embarrassed and people don't like you anymore. And like, it's, it makes no logical sense. Like I got worried that people were upset because I couldn't, you know, spend individual time with everybody. And it's like, yeah, but nobody expects that of the bride at the wedding. Like, come on. And we decided to have it on a Thursday night to save money. And I was like, people were mad and leaving early because they thought it was stupid that you would have a wedding on a Thursday. And it's like, no, people just have work in the morning. Like, it's, it's just, it just, it was ridiculous. And I would just, that's what finally made me realize, like, it's time. It's time. Meditation's not cutting it. Positive thinking's not cutting it. You know, nature walks, they're not cutting it. Um, it my anxiety is polluting the memory of my wedding day that is not okay. So I finally realized like, okay, it, it's time to get on medication. However, at that time we knew we were going to be trying for a baby and I didn't want to start a medication just to have to get off of it. And I didn't want to deal with insurance in the meantime, just trying to figure all that out. So I thought like, it's okay, just conceive and then figure it out afterward. Now I got pregnant right away. First try, boom, done. And man, being pregnant was my anxiety was gone. Progesterone. I think it's the progesterone that actually helps with anxiety. That was the best anti-anxiety I've ever tried in my life. And I was just naturally producing it. So I felt great emotionally, uh, in that regard throughout my pregnancy. 
Um, but then of course it, my anxiety only got worse from the normal level of anxiety that I have once I had the baby because hormones, the hormone flush after giving birth, the lack of sleep, of course. I'm pretty sure I talked about this in my like motherhood vlog. So that's back there somewhere. But yes, uh, my anxiety just got ticked way up. So finally, I just called up the doctor said, yep, <laughs> please help me. Dear God, please help me. I got on a very low dose of a medication and it's been wonderful. It's been perfect. My anxiety is just like, I don't want to say it's 100% gone, but when it is there, it's pretty manageable. I've, I haven't had a single day of debilitating anxiety. I haven't had a single day of like, oh my gosh, I don't want to get out of bed. Everybody hates me. Like, it's just a couple moments of like, oh, I feel a little more stressed out than normal. Like, okay, well, stop. You know, my medication has the anxiety covered. So for the stress portion, that's on me. Let's stop. Let's regroup, put together a to-do list to organize my thoughts, meditate, ground center. I'm good. So what does that have to do with the baby? Well, it it did give me this breathing room now to realize how much my anxiety has been holding me back. And I just, I've realized, wow, my anxiety was holding me back so much. And I don't want that anxiety to hold my child back. I have taken my baby on so many little adventures, whether it's out to hate Ashbury in San Francisco, visiting an old friend, uh, taking her on the two hour drive to stay with my sister for a weekend, uh, going camping, going to Portland, all kinds of stuff, beach days, nature walks, hikes. We've done so many things. And some of it was things that I was thinking like, oh my gosh, this was so spur of the moment. This was so spontaneous. Um, my anxiety totally would have overwhelmed me in the past and I just wouldn't have gone. I know that these things are enriching for her, even if she doesn't know it. And it's been so good for me too. I, I just found such a renewed energy in life this past year that I'm so grateful for. And it's because of her, it's because of the medication, it's because of a lot of things. And now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like I maybe talked about this in my spring vlog. So if I'm repeating myself, I'm very, very sorry for those of you who watched that one. But for those of you who didn't watch that one. Here you go. Okay, let's move on. So Luna says, so like I said, I'm, I'm trying to remember what I did for the summer solstice. It still has not come back to me. Um, but let's talk about Lunasa. I did keep that pretty light because it did go, it came right after our camping trip. And I was like, I just spent a bunch of time in nature and now I'm handling a sick baby. Like it's, it's, it's fine. Now Lunasa of course is a harvest festival. So I did things a little bit backwards where I replanted some plants instead of harvesting the plants I had previously planted, right? But it was just things that I kind of had neglected, to be honest, like my little herb garden and stuff. So I had just sort of neglected it and was like, yeah, I should probably replant these. So I took the time to do that. I also think that taking care of plants and nurturing them is a great way to show gratitude to just in a general sense to nature, to the elements, to the universe. And so you know, I think that's a great way to celebrate any Sabbath, really. Just like with any Sabbath, you can like just any kind of observation of, you know, great, being grateful is, is a great way to celebrate. So it works. I also just did some moving meditation, um, in doing that gardening that helped me focus on what I'm grateful for. Let's see. So I got some tattoos done. This is just, anyway, it's sort of witchy a little bit. Um, I got some tattoos done two days ago. Um, so one of them is on the back of my neck. It's a Kurt Vonnegut quote I posted on Instagram and it says, so it goes. That's from Slaughterhouse Five. Um, if you guys know me, like from some of my personal tidbits and videos and vlogs and stuff, you might know that a lot of my practice is centered around death. Um, I did work in the funeral industry. <laughs> I have a sort of affinity for death and the afterlife, that cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. And so the quote, so it goes, just is very meaningful for me. Now in that book in particular, it is, it is also referencing a sort of desensitization to death because of, you know, war. But I didn't get it for that reason. I did get it for the deeper meanings of, um, that's life. You know, death is part of life and it is something that is to be accepted because you can't avoid it. So don't fight it accept it. I mean, not, you don't have to go seeking it out. Right. Of course. But, uh, it's, it is part of that cycle. Like I mentioned, so it goes, so it goes. Um, and then there's the, uh, if you're familiar with the book Slaughterhouse Five, there's the Tralfamadorian way of viewing life that we are existing in all 
moments at the same time, right? So nobody ever truly dies at all. Now this, this spoke to me a lot recently as well um, because my grandfather did pass away. It, it's, it's one that, that hit me pretty hard and I'm not I'm not quite in a place where I can, I'm getting choked up right now. I'm not quite in a place I can talk about it um, still. So, um, but you know, he's got a new special place on my ancestor altar and um, that's sort of taken, had an effect on my, uh, my practice recently. Um, and so I don't want to say that I got this tattoo because of him, in particular, only because like it is a tattoo that I've wanted since I was like 15 and first read Slaughterhouse Five. And it's always been a meaningful phrase to me, but I guess I did get it kind of in my mind a lot more lately. But speaking of how my practice is very influenced by cycles and liminal spaces and things like that. I also got my triple moon tattoos on my fingers. So there's that. Then there's, okay, then there's also, the last video I just posted was a review of the book A Victorian Grimoire by Patricia Telesco. I was getting ready to post that video and I'm on Amazon and I go to the books page because I need to get the link um, to put in the description box for it. And I went ahead and I just clicked Patricia Telesco's name to just, just out of curiosity. I, I loved the book and I thought, well, let me see what else she's written. I scroll down to the bottom and there it is. <sighs> the very first book I ever bought on witchcraft. The reason this was sort of like a what kind of moment for me was because I have not been able to remember the name of the book, the author, what it even really looked like for years, decades. Like I bought it when I was 12. I would go and hang out at the mall like you did at that time. By the way, can we bring that back? Like mall hangouts? Like we should all just start doing that again. Anyway, I loved this one tiny bookstore. It wasn't a Borders or a Barnes and Noble or anything like that. I couldn't even tell you the name of the place. And I would always go to the metaphysical section. A lot of times I would read and, and purchase books on ghosts and hauntings and things like that. That was my first draw. Um, I also got, that's where I bought a few Sylvia Brown books at the time, because at the time I was like fascinated by Sylvia Brown. Nowadays I have mixed feelings on the woman, may she rest in peace, but you know. But that's also where I, you know, I had already had an interest in the occult and witchcraft because of I don't know, I grew up in the 90s. We had the OG Charmed, we had the craft. So of course I already had a little bit of an interest in it. But this was my exposure to like, oh my gosh, you can actually like learn? You can actually like learn how to be a witch? Like what, there's books on it? This is crazy, this is amazing. Most days I would go and I would just browse. I would just browse, I'd flip through all the books, I'd read little passages here and there and I would just browse. I was very nervous about actually buying something. And I do remember when I finally bought the book, um, I was even at the register, I was like, am I gonna get in trouble? Like, is this is this cashier gonna refuse to sell me this book? Like, are, yeah, I don't know. You know, I was very nervous about it because um, I knew my mom was gonna be not happy about it if she, if she found out about it, which is eventually what happened. But anyway, something about this book in particular is just a very simple book of spells. And um, it was just this small little square thing. Um, all I could remember in the past was that it had purple font and it was cream colored cover. And that's that's all I can remember. Couldn't remember anything else about it. I also cannot remember what exactly drew me to it. Um, I do know part of it was because it was small so I could hide it easily. <laughs> but there were a lot of books like that. So I know that wasn't the only reason. But yeah, that was my first book on witchcraft. I did buy it. I did a couple spells out of it. Um, my mom did find it and she was not happy and she, she was very misguided at the time and we weren't church going Christians, but we were sort of like default Christians. If you know what I mean by that, like the, I don't know, I guess we believe in God. Sure. Kind of people. So my mom was like, you know, the magic, it comes from the devil. Even if you don't think it is, it doesn't matter if it's, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what you think, you, you know, it all comes from Satan. And I, you know, I was also in a, in a, I was in a headspace at the time where I was like, well, I'm not entirely sure I believe in Satan. So, uh, but it still scared me regardless. Cause I was like, 
I don't know. I've, I've pretty much always been an agnostic and I will probably always be an agnostic. But um, now I'm an agnostic pagan. But at the time I was very much like, okay, well, that's if that's true. Now I'm scared. So um, she made me get rid of it. And I kind of that put a little stop to my my exploration of that for a while. But four years later, I tried again. And then I got scared again. And then <laughs> It was really in my 20s that I kind of committed to the practice and the research and the reading and that's where I actually got into it. So yeah, I can't believe I, after all these years, I found that book. So of course I ordered it. I bought a used copy. They didn't have any new ones. So I was like, yeah, I was, I was just so pumped and it's on its way. It's coming in the next couple days. So I don't know if I'm going to like it. Um, it's been, you know, 24 years since I bought that book. So while I love Patricia Telesco's current books, like I, you know, I may not like that one, you know, who knows, or maybe I'll love it. I don't know. But at the very least, I did want to have a copy of it just for pure sentimental value. Okay, so let's talk about spells I did. Um, I had done the um, moon box spell for contacting your spirit guides. And I I didn't have any success with that. And so I went back and I kind of looked at my note for it and I realized like, wow, this is way too vague. Like even if there was communication, it just would have been like right over my head because it's just, ooh. anyway, I decided to redo it and get a little more specific. And to be honest, that was only a couple days ago. So I'm still waiting. I have no results from that yet. Um, but yeah, I do have a money bowl that I keep relatively active, but I did realize that I had been kind of neglecting it. So I went back to it and I took some things out and I added some things to it, just kind of give it a little refresher and like, boom, that's when a lot of stuff started flowing in. Like my husband got new clients. I got contacted about that acting role. And so, <laughs> yeah, don't neglect your money bowls. Just, yeah. Finally, um, I was at an event and there was a psychic there who was doing readings and I had actually heard about her before because she practices in my, um, the town that I live in and a friend of mine who has very similar beliefs to what I believe. And also like, so she has like a fair dosage of skepticism and stuff. She had actually gotten a reading from this woman at a different event. And so she like highly recommended her. And so I went to her and I did get a reading and I, I, okay. With psychics, <laughs> it's not that I don't believe that psychics exist or that people have a naturally more attuned intuition and get signs and symbols and maybe some form of communication. But I think a lot of people who sell the service are not honest about that. So I've always been very hesitant to actually hand money over to a psychic. I've done it one other time in my life, but lately I have been interested just, um, I, I feel like right now my paths are kind of branching out in a lot of different directions and I'm just looking on, I mean, there's the obvious focus. Like I have, I, I have to, and want to focus on my family. Um, you know, we have a baby, I have my husband, we want to have another baby. So we're working on that. That's obviously a very important focus, but I feel like in a lot of areas of my life, like even just talking earlier, I'm like, I've got the channel and then I've got this film project and then I'm going to have a theater project. And then also I'm working on this book and I'm working on that book and I'm working on this writing project. And like, it's just like all over the place. And so I was hoping to speak with somebody and maybe get a little more insight. Like I've done readings for myself, but I just feel like I'm not getting clear answers, which is maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what it's supposed to be, right? Like maybe it's just everything's telling me like, figure it out for yourself, bitch. I don't know. Um, or maybe it's like the path is not clear yet. The path is just not clear yet. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, you're spread a little thin, but hang in there a little bit longer and the path will become clear. Who knows? Um, but anyway, I thought, okay, well, let me just see a psychic in the meantime and see if she has anything to say about it. And for the most part, um, it was fine. The reading was fine. I felt like I got more information about my husband than I did about my own life. <laughs> that's fine. Hey, if that's the information that needed to be conveyed to me, then it is what it is. I'm happy to receive it. I was really excited to sit down with her, but here's here's the thing that I wanted to get to. So I did get a little bit of insight, like I said, but I also had a question that um, did not get answered. The answer to it was no, don't do that. Which, okay, 
when I talk about writing, I do writing for this channel and for the blog that's related to this channel. I have like a million ideas for horror novels. I have a book on witchcraft that I'm working on. I also have um, script writing that I'm, uh, for the project that I'm actively involved in. I write various scenes. I'm kind of co-writing on that one um, and revising scenes that have already been written as well. And yeah, that, I think that sums up most of it. So I asked, like, is writing something I should pursue and focus on? Because it takes a lot of time and work. And to be honest, like, I'm not saying that it's a waste of time to write something that doesn't get published. I'm not saying that. I also just love writing, period. So even if it, if I write a whole horror novel and it goes nowhere, nobody ever reads it but my friends because it's a piece of crap or whatever. <laughs> or maybe I just decide not to submit it anywhere and not self-publish. Like, that's okay. There's still value in the activity, activity of having done it, of having made the accomplishment of having finished it right? This is just an, as, as an example. Um, maybe some of my friends and family got some entertainment out of it. I got entertainment out of writing it. I got some fulfillment in that, right? Um, I'm not saying that money is the only way that that makes that effort worthwhile, but I am currently in a place where I am spread very thin. And so I am, and I do feel very fulfilled. I, I'm already very fulfilled regardless of what creative pursuit I'm working on, they're all going to make me feel fulfilled. So in that regard, I'm fine. So I really thought, okay, when this project wraps, um, you know, I'm going to need to find a focus. Now, is it worth my time financially to just like put my nose to the grindstone and, you know, finish the first draft and then finish the second draft and then get the beta readers going and pay beta readers, maybe pay a, an editor and then submit it to agencies and stuff. Like that's a lot of work. That's a lot of time. And that can also cost money. So I was sort of like, you know, is that worth it right now? That was ultimately my question. The psychic, which by the way, I'm not going to name who, who it was or anything like that, but, um, cause I don't think it was a bad reading overall. And I didn't like, I didn't get any bad vibes off of it or like any, like my bullshit meter was not going off except for this one moment that kind of bothered me. So she flips the card for herself, looks at it and slaps it back down, face down on the table. And she just shook her head. No. And I was like, what would, what? what? <laughs> She's like, you should not pursue writing right now. And to be clear, when I asked this question, I did not specify what type of writing, which I already told you is various types, various styles, various genres, and for various different projects. Um, so she refused to tell me and I was just like, oh, okay. I said, well, what's the card? And she goes, it doesn't matter. You just shouldn't pursue it. And then she kind of changed the subject. And I was like, Okay, I like indulged her for a second, but then I was like, but let's bring it back around. <laughs> Can I see that card? And she said, no, you don't need to see it. <sighs> she just informed me that writing was bringing toxicity into my household. And that was the end of the story. And that if I wanted to know more, I could come back to her later. There it is. Um, to see if I should pursue writing uh, later on. And I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. So not only does that leave me with so many questions of like what I should just never write, like don't even write so much as a text. Okay, I'm being dramatic, but like, like no creative writing whatsoever. Like, so no longer writing for this channel or my blog. No, no more writing the scripts that I'm actively in the middle of writing um, or the witchy book or the novels, the fiction novels, like, or the short stories, like, just halt all of that because you're going to give me a vague, generous reply, a, ge a, a vague, general reply of it's bringing toxicity into your home. What? And then you're not even going to show me the card. That was the big thing that bothered me. I was like, I don't think that that card says that. I think you were just saying that. Like, I don't want to say that she's a liar, but I do feel like, I don't know. Like nothing about it made sense. It was just way too vague. And I was like, no, I have so many questions, <laughs> so many questions, and you're not answering any of them. And then you won't show me the card for me to gather my own conclusion. So 
Anyway, that was my experience with that. Has it completely put me off from psychics and getting a reading done? No. Will I go back to her? Probably not, which was really disappointing. Like I said, I was very excited for it and I was really looking forward to getting a reading with her, but mm. anywho, I think that's everything. Um, like I said, for the most part, everything's like pretty damn positive right now. I'm really enjoying life and uh, I'm just feeling very light in my spirit and I just feel really good. And I feel like a lot of good things are happening right now and a lot of good things are on their way is what I'm sensing. And you know, the occasional struggle is gonna happen, of course. And yeah, that is life right now for me. Anyway, I hope you all are doing wonderful. Tell me about your summers, um, your summer solstices and your plans for the autumn equinox down below in the comments. I want to hear from all of you. Anyway, love you so much and I'll talk to you all soon.